My son has a friend who's, uh, my oldest son, Andrew, has a friend whose dad was killed um, on September 11th. And what struck me um, just this past week was that now this young man has lived longer without his father than he lived with him. He's 17 years old now. He was eight when his father died. And so for folks who are thinking about the meaning of what we're going to go through over the next week, um, I would suggest respectfully that you think about kids like that, whose lives have been forever changed by that moment, not to have a father, and to now have lived more years of his life without his dad than he lived with him. Um, I think about you know, that young man and others all the time as I'm lucky enough to watch my own son um, grow up at the same age and hope that you have some positive influence on them over time uh, and know that, that this father didn't have that opportunity and this son doesn't have that opportunity. If you're going to say a prayer for anybody over the next week, say a prayer for those kids who will go the rest of their lives without a dad or a mom in some instances. Um, and those spouses who are going to go without a husband or a wife. That never will change for them. Our lives have changed in comparatively inconsequential ways. For them, every day, every day is that type of event. And I used to talk about this when I was U.S. attorney, and I think it's an important moment to remind people of this. Um, everybody in the aftermath of September 11th asked, like, you know, what... What can I do? What can I do to try to show my solidarity with these families, with these victims? And, and I thought, if we gave a moment of silence, one minute of silence, for every one of the victims who died that day, if we all sat here now, said, okay, we'll do it now. We'll give a moment of silence for each one of them. If we did that, we'd be sitting here in silence together until about 6 o'clock on Thursday night if we gave each one of them one minute. That's the enormity of the loss that people experienced on September 11th. That's 50 hours of time, right? But think about it. These folks have now gone through 10 years of that loss minute by minute. So even if we sat here for the next 50 hours in silence, for each one of those lost souls, it would be a fraction of the sacrifice that those children and their surviving spouses and the mothers and fathers who survived the loss of a child and the brothers and sisters who survived the loss of a sibling have sacrificed over time. So, you know, for me, it's a very emotional time, a time when I reflect on the loss of, you know, some friends and a time when Mary Pat and I count our blessings for the fact that she um, was among the survivors that day. Because believe me, I was sitting at home with a eight-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter and a 14-month-old son, contemplating for five or six hours what it might be like to be a single parent. Yeah, that tends to clarify things a lot in your life. And, and I, it's an interesting time and an important time for me and Mary Pat um, as people who are honored now to have the opportunity to lead the state, to reflect on the blessings that we all have in our lives compared to those who suffered that great loss. So um, it's an important time. We'll be talking a lot about it over the course of the next few days and into the weekend. Uh, and I think it's really important for all Americans, but especially New Jerseyans, to take some time to really reflect and, and thank God for their blessings and pray for the lost souls and their families who survived. If we do that, then I think we'll be doing something that's really good and needed for the people who made that sacrifice. So thank you all very much.